Okay, one of the things we're going to do uh, today is change your oil. Now, there's so much conjecture about what oil is the best oil. Um, these particular bikes, you know, you get your big road bikes and stuff, and we sometimes use it. Well, we use a full synthesized oil on them. But this here is a 1550, and it's a premium mineral oil. Um, and what's what's important is that um, it's got full uh, zinc, which is for your gearbox and your clutch. All right. So I'll just quickly read. It, it says it's an anti-wear additive package for maximum engine wear, and then it's also got what they call it's shear stable formulated, which protects against v viscosity loss. Okay. So they're two important ones, especially your gearbox. And if the you can have oil that looks pretty clean, but if it's if it's broken down and it doesn't have its um, viscosity, well, it's useless. It's just like water. So in this particular oil, um, I'm just reading on the back of it what it says. It's also good for high temperatures, which you can get because these are an air cooled bike. So if you're working them hard, climbing up something, or just you're not putting much, you know, no forward moment, um, so they're not getting um, air coming through them. Um, so that's why I choose that, and it's an Australian, it's an Australian um, oil, so which I really like. Uh, oil filter, pretty standard, it's the one that fits in them. Um, so that's about it. So I'm going to change the oil, change the filter. Uh, I'm going to we use uh, good quality. I can't remember their actual name, but we call them pineapples, pineapple air cleaners, uh, which are really good, and then we spray them. So, but what we do on the outside of that is we use like um, dishcloth. Uh, yeah, so we use this sort of stuff, and um, it's just like a a normal like a cloth that's just for doing your hands. So we use that and we put that on the outside, and what that will do is just catch any dust instead of getting sucked into the pineapple. Um, and then we, you know, after a day, you just pull that out, give it a clean, shove it back in again. It gets really badly wet or um, dusty. Um, piff it out and put another one in. So that's what we use that for. Um, so that's about all, really, as far as you know, doing your normal servicing. You check your chain, obviously. Um, lube it up before you go out. I do have a new tire here. Mark and I both went and got tires the other day. So it's a 606 which is a pretty run-of-the-mill tyre for these sort of things. Um, I know Lucas runs, my son, he runs a, a Michelin tyre, and uh, he says he's not too sure on it, whether it's as good or whatever. Um, I noticed when we were uh, out, when I was out with him the other week, um, his bike seems to uh, throw, throw dirt up more, where these seem to throw it out more. So... I don't know why they do it, probably just holds on to the dirt a bit longer before it releases off the tyre. So anyway, so <clears throat> I'm not sure, I can probably get away this weekend, it's going to be pretty dry everywhere you go, um, which, which will lead into what I'm going to do next, um, tell you next. Um, so I think I'll just keep that on until I get back. Um, Mark's got his new one on, so we'll see what the difference is between them. This is about half worn, my one. Okay, as I said, this weekend we're going to go for a ride um, and we're going to go up to Lederberg. Now, Lederberg, some call it Lederberg Gorge, Lederberg State Forest, um, whichever one you want. So it's in Victoria and it's near Bacchus Marsh. Um, I've never been there before and that's why I thought it's worth mentioning. So that there is the map of the, of the whole area, which is quite a good map. It shows you all the parking spots, the picnic spots, camping spots, all the little roads, the creeks, rivers, the whole lot. I've also got that one, which is Vic Map, uh, and this one's the, oh, this one's just the, what do they call it? doesn't say I know what they call it, just Lederberg and Werribee Gorge, Victoria Parks, so that's that one. Also shows you where um, they can, they sometimes close off roads, tracks, because they get chewed up. This time of year we should be pretty right because it's middle of summer. So that's that. Now, because it's the first time, I take a GPS 
and I'll also run with my phone which has maps on it because we're only literally oh, I'd reckon by the crow flies sort of 30 k's out of Bacchus Marsh um, in that area it's not really going to be um, a big thing as far as GPS signal because you're so close to that area sometimes when we get up in the, the high country they can get a little bit dodgy but generally they're pretty good so that's why I'll take that, that's just a, a Garmin like you'd have in your car All right. so it won't show all the maps but what it will do is I can put a track on it so wherever I go if I turn around I can track it back out again so that's important but that's your number one you use your map um, when I was I was lucky enough that when I was doing my um, pilot's license that was a big part of it not tracking maps but we did aeroplane maps so um, you get taught how to read a map properly which is really important and it's not that hard I mean, it's just common sense a lot of it but it is good to know um, like a lot of people will get disorientated when they're heading in one direction and if they do a turn they may think they're traveling north but now they're traveling east or west and they're not you know they get confused like that um, so anyway it's just practice you just keep doing it um, and if you go out with other people you know let them lead but do it yourself so you, so you get um, good at it and that's all it, and then eventually you'll just it'll click one day and you'll be onto it so yeah, so that's that. So that's what we're doing this weekend. That's why we're getting these ready. These have basically been hidden away for the winter. Um, so now we pull them out, go right over them. Um, Mark had his apart yesterday. All the seats off, all the plastics are off it. Going right through, making sure that everything was good. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. So I'll um, keep on going and catch up down the track. Hey, last time Lucas and I were out up the bush, I um, had a spill and um, one of the things that I did was bent my gear stick. We pulled it out at the time, um, but now I've realised that I've got to come back and fix it properly. So this is what it looks like. You see down there it's got like, a, like an arc shape. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be on an angle, but this bit here isn't quite supposed to be like that. So I'll take it off and fix that up, and it'll be good to go again. All right. Okay, uh, I've just gone down and got some brake pads. So um, the best way I always do it is I take one of my old ones down, because very often... Um, it can be the same bike, like a, this is 2013, but you might find the 96 model has a different brake pad. How many times have I been caught doing that? Because you don't look at the you know, style of it. So anyway, that's what I do. I just take one down with me to make sure. So but we're all good. So we'll open these up. High performance off-road brake pads. Okay. So they're high performance, well they must be, they're red, so they've got to be high performance. Alright, we'll turn you down here. We've done this the other day on the, uh, we did one of those the other day when we did the uh, Suzuki. Same sort of deal. So it's got to come across a bit. That's going to go in there, like that. That one has to go in there, like that. Yeah, what I do now is that I've got this, which a lot of them have. I didn't see where it came out the other day, but I'm pretty sure that slides in there. So. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Um, got it done now. That little bracket, which I wasn't sure of, lives down in there. I'll just 
open them up a little bit so it lives down there and that stops the, the pad from rattling. Alright, so hopefully it's just a matter of sliding that back on like that. Whoops, fell out. Get back in there. One. Don't have to go mental on tightening them up as long as they're tight. Check the other one. Yep. Okay. So that's the front brake done. Give it a few pumps and then uh, I'll change the oil and the filter now. When we're probably starting to look good, then I'll give it a nice clean. Just make sure everything's working how it should. We'll be good to go. Okay. Are we on? Yep. Okay, we've just come across a little problem. Mark's went to undo his sump plug today, and for whatever reason, it's locked on there solid. So in the in the attempts of trying to get it to come off, um, he burred the, the edges on it. So I've got to the point now where I'm going to grind some flats on it, get a proper tool on there, and then we'll get it off and Mark will zip down and get another bolt for it. A sump bolt. So there you go, so this is the bike. Toughest DR in Seafood. As you can see, still full of shit. Alright, well we'll try and get it off. We'll do some cutting and see how we go. You got a the top's got to go that way. Maybe I'll come around your side. Just sort of from where I'm looking. Yeah, that's my broken mirror, see? Yep. Okay. Sorry? Is that flat surface? 